Hello, welcome back to Family Art Project's Depth and Distance series. Today we are looking at coral as inspiration for our art making. Uh, as you can see here, I have what's called a sea fan coral. It's a type of coral that I found washed up on the beach already detached. And if you look very closely at the sea fan coral, you see so many details, such detail in the form. So today as we uh, make our art project, we're thinking about the shape and the form of coral. And we're also going to be thinking about color. Because as you'll see here, this is a kind of dark green. Um, but normally when we think of coral, we think of this, these vibrant, beautiful colors um, that live in the ocean. But coral is a really beautiful being because it actually lets, it actually lets us know when it's not doing well. So here I have an example of some of the art we're making, and this is actually not coral, but it looks uh, similar to uh, a kind of coral called brain coral. And this is just um, kind of uh, a dyed, what's called an Osage orange, and it's dyed white. And the reason it's dyed white is because when coral is not doing well, when the water is too warm, coral lets us know that it's not doing well, that it's not healthy by bleaching. And so we see all these colors in the coral disappear and it all kind of turns to white when the coral is really unhealthy and not doing well, when it's ill. And so the amazing thing is, is that actually coral can, um, can be ill and bleach and then recolor itself back again. But that means that the environment needs to be healthy. So today for our art project, we're going to be thinking about how we can reimagine a healthy ecosystem for our coral and what it means to, to create uh, an ecosystem or to contribute to an already thriving ecosystem and make sure we're taking care of a beautiful ecosystem that keeps our coral colorful. Uh, and we're going to be looking to the artist uh, Courtney Madison who um, has work in the online exhibition at Wave Hill Eco Urgency. And Courtney's work is all about thinking about that changing color, the bleaching coral, but also this really vibrant coral. So today we're first gonna start with a project from Ryan about looking at the shape and the form of coral and imagining it in its bright and beautiful possibilities. And then we'll take a look at how uh, we can find different found objects that replicate the many different forms of coral and imagine what happens if all of those lose its color, if all of that coral lose its color and how then we can reimagine creating new color, re, uh, reimagine how we can create new color in our coral to replicate coral recoloring itself after, after being ill and unhealthy. What can we do to reimagine color in our coral? How can the color stay colorful? How can we support coral uh, so that it gains its color back? So let's get into the projects. Hello. In this portion of the video, I'm going to walk you through how to make a coral reef using paper mache. So the process of using paper mache is fun because it forces you to be really creative in how you put your structure together. There's no right or wrong way in how to go about it. The intent is to just simply uh, grab materials and be creative and come up with new solutions on how you to put it together. So what you see me here doing in the video is working on the base structure of our coral reef. And I'm, I've cut out squares and the marks that I'm making on here are to uh, create inserts that I can slide the two sheets of square cardboards into each other. It'll create a diamond-like or uh, square-like structure. Now that I have that together, I'm cutting out coral reef patterns. And we'll fast forward past that as it's cut out. And again, I'm creating marks in the middle or drawing in lines and cutting them out so that I can slide it into 
that square pattern that I put together. It's a technique that people use to uh, not have to use glue or tape to hold structures together. And we'll eventually use tape and glue in this project, but I just wanted to show you um, that there are multiple ways in how you assemble something to hold things together. So with cutting these inserts, all the pieces should be able to slide into each other pretty well and cardboard is stiff, so it should hold. And now we have a kind of like a three dimensional outline of our structure. We want to bulk it up a bit. So I'm using hot glue and newsprint. And the newsprint I bought up to put onto the coral reef outline that we first assembled to bulk up the body. I'm putting newsprint in the areas uh, on top and below our structure and lining it up really nicely. I'm forming each of the newspaper to the coral reef shape. So I'm balling it up in a particular way that it fits on the structure and doesn't go beyond each uh, part of the structure. Once we have all of the structure together, I'm taping it around uh, the sides just to keep that newsprint secure. When we put the paper mache over it, it's going to stay tight and all together and I won't have to worry about it coming apart. But until we get to that point, uh, I want to make sure that this structure stays intact so the tape just keeps it um, secure temporarily. Once we have everything together, we're on to the part of the video where we can make our mache. So there are many different kinds of ways of creating uh, the glue or the binding structure for paper mache. And for us, we're using household materials. I have flour and water. For this, that's all you need to make paper mache. The flour is a binding structure that'll hold things intact. So I've mixed, I would say about one part flour, one part water, and you wanna kinda keep it a bit thick. Once you mix that together, all you need to do is to start layering the newsprint that is cut up into different shapes and patterns, if you like, or just strips. Dip it into your mix, your flour and water mix, and start laying it over top of your structure. If you have excess water flour mix on your paper, just wipe it down. You don't want it overloaded because then it'll take forever to dry. You just want enough to cover that newsprint, wipe off excess, and lay it on top of your structure. Now my structure is completed here and it takes at least 24 hours to dry. I'm only doing one layer on mine because it only I'm only doing one layer on mine because it takes 24 hours to dry. And for time's sake, we're just gonna do one layer here. Generally, I would advise for two layers of mache. Now, as you can see, that is dry. It's much cleaner. It's not really gluey and messy as it looked before. 
And once it's dry, you can start laying down color. But before you put color, the kind of paint uh, you want, or the color paint that you want to put down first is white. You can go ahead and directly apply any kind of color you want, red, purple, blue, but by putting white as a base down first, when you do eventually put color on the second layer, it'll mix, it'll have the colors pop out really nicely. And now we can put color on it. The coral reef, you'll see it in all colors. I have a really nice purple here, so I just chose purple. And I'm putting a dark purple on the sides and on the top, I have a lighter purple. Every coral reef has its own shade or some of them are solid colors all the way around. I've seen some where the top or the edges, the tips are a lighter color. It just depends. You could make a crazy pattern if you'd like. We just really want this to be vibrant and colorful because we want to highlight and show just how beautiful these coral reefs are. Now that we've seen Ryan build a very healthy coral, we're going to be thinking about what happens when a coral is sick and is bleached, and how we can reimagine what it would take for the coral to be healthy again. So you'll see here that I actually laid out a bunch of materials, both natural and found materials, and the idea here is that I'm just going to be using them, these materials that I can either cast in a handmade plaster or I'll just paint white to resemble the coral. So when I look at which materials I want to use, I'm really looking at the forms that resemble coral. So what do I mean by form? Form is basically, yes, the shape that the object takes, but also the way the object takes up space and depth and captures light. So if you think of coral in the sea, you might think of animals swimming by and seeing this coral and the many shapes that this coral takes depending on the animal's vantage point and the way that the coral moves with the water current, currents or the way that the coral catches the light from the surface of the water. So you're going to be thinking about all the ways that this coral takes form and natural or found materials and how it might resemble the many different types of coral. So once I've found my materials, the next step is just to create a cast. And the way I'm doing that is just by using cornstarch and glue and mixing them together. So the last step here is to simply paint the found objects or use the dough like cast to cover the shape of the object. And voila, bleached coral. But we don't want bleached coral, do we? Bleached coral means stressed coral. We want our coral to be thriving in its beautiful and bright vibrancy. Coral is bleached when the waters are too warm or there's stuff in the water that shouldn't naturally be there. Bleaching happens when humans construct on the coast or empty out materials in the ocean, or if the waters get too warm from our habits. But if we change our behaviors as humans, some coral, though not all, will be able to gain the color back again. As you repaint your white coral, can you think of how you can overcome struggle to keep your vibrancy? Can you paint vibrant, colorful coral to let others know that you care about the health of our ocean ecosystems?